Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. If you own a QNAP NAS, chances are you've had some questions about its networking and that's what we hope to answer today. QNAP has an application called the Network and Virtual Switch and it is the application that you use to configure the network on your QNAP NAS. So most QNAP NAS devices have two four or even more network adapters if you've added any to the available expansion slots in the case of the larger NAS machines and are normally depicted as your physical adapters with names like ETH0, ETH1, and so on. Virtual switches or bridges like I'd like to refer to them on the channel frequently are created with names such as QVS0, QVS1, and so on, and they're assigned addresses on your LAN, or I should say on the LAN that the adapter is connected to. Virtual machines, LexD containers, and Docker containers are assigned virtual address names, or virtual adapter names, I should say, in the network and virtual switch application. So in general, network and virtual switch handles the configuration of the virtual switches and the physical adapters that you use with your applications. A new QNAP NAS has no virtual switches to begin with. And virtual switches are like the Docker Zero, and the LexDBR0, and they're created by Container Station, as well as several others, and we're going to see that in this tutorial. So other virtual switches can be created to facilitate connections to particular physical adapters, such as the ETH0 and ETH1 that I mentioned earlier. It is possible to create VLAN adapters but they're not supported currently by Container Station version 2.0. So here we are at the QTS desktop, and if I go up to the hamburger menu and go down to Network and Virtual Switch, and we'll go ahead and maximize this to the screen size, this Network and Virtual Switch for my backup NAS is pretty simple. To begin with, on the right-hand column, you have the list of your physical adapters. And these are ETH0, ETH1, ETH2, ETH3 in my case. Adapter 1 and 2 are teamed together with 802.3 AD. And adapter 3, I just have named adapter 3 VLANs for the purposes of this demonstration and you can see that nothing is connected to it and then I have an adapter 4. In the middle column I have virtual switches and virtual switches are the things that various applications can make a connection to and finally in the left hand column I have particular containers in this case the first two happen to be virtualization station, virtual machines, and the last one is a portainer edge agent, which is a Docker container. In order to look at QNAP networking in more detail, we're gonna go up to the hamburger menu and we're gonna choose control panel. Under control panel, we're going to go to general settings and under general settings, we're going to go over to console management. By default, you probably should have enable console management checked, and this just gives you a couple of extra menus when you SSH into your NAS, and I recommend that. So if you don't have this checkbox checked, go ahead and check it and then click apply at the bottom of the screen. The next step is to go over to network and file services and to choose Telnet and SSH. In order to enable SSH connection, you want to have a checkbox in the allow SSH connection and parenthetically it says that only administrators are allowed to log in remotely. The default port number for the SSH protocol is port number 22. 
You can change that if you want. I've left mine the same. And then finally, I recommend enabling secure file transfer, which I featured on the channel before. And then you have the ability to edit your access permission and you can provide permission for other people to SSH into the terminal if you like. And I'll go ahead and click apply. And once you click apply, then those settings will be available for when we go down to the command prompt. So here we are at the command prompt for my desktop machine. And I'm going to do an SSH over to the admin account at VMS Fog. So previously, I had done an SSH-copy-ID to copy the SSH keys from my desktop over to my QNAP NAS. And so I don't have to authenticate explicitly each time. And that's covered in some of my other videos. The admin account is the account that's granted access or admin access to the command prompt as we saw through the control panel. And VMS Fog is a local DNS entry for my QNAP NAS. So when I hit enter, it provides me with that console management menu that we mentioned previously, but we're not going to delve into that this particular time. So I do a queue to quit that menu. And yes, I am sure, which goes back to the command prompt. In order to get a closer look at the networking, we're going to do an if config command at this command prompt on the QNAP NAS. And we see a whole bunch of adapters get printed out. If I scroll all the way to the top of this list, you can see that I have, first of all, BON0, and this is the 802.3 AD teamed adapter of adapter 0 and 1 on my network, and it shows here as device BOND0. Next, I have a couple of bridge devices, and if you look at their internet addresses, you can see that their IP addresses are 172.30.0.1, which is an internal NAT address, and the other 172.29.0.1. And I presume that these are probably used for Docker, but we can delve a little bit deeper to see that. Down here we have the obvious uh, Docker Zero adapter, and it does have an internal address or a NATed address of 10.0.5.1 as Docker normally has its own internal network. Then you'll notice that I have devices ETH0, ETH1, ETH2, and ETH3. And the reasoning for that is because this QNAP NAS has four network adapters on it. You'll notice that none of these network adapters have IP addresses associated with them. And although they're the physical adapters, QNAP assigns, and rightfully so, addresses to bridges that they create. The next adapter we have is the loopback connector. And then we have LexCBR0, which in Container Station, uh, back in 2.x or still in 2.x, they supported LexD containers as well as LexD containers. The LexCBR0 was originally intended to be that internal bridge for LexC containers, whereas LexDBR0 is that internal NATed bridge for LexD containers. Following those, we have QVS0, QVS2 in my case, and a QVS2 or QVS0.80. All of these are virtual bridge adapters, and you may not see them on your system unless you have added a virtual switch. That was the second column that we were looking at in network and virtual switch, and we'll go back and visit that in detail but that's what those QVS devices are. Next, I have a couple of VETH devices, and these are virtual Ethernet adopter devices. And in my case, um, ET, or VETH, these two VETH devices are actually my virtual machines. And then I have a VNet0 and also a VNet1, 
which are other virtual networks, and we'll see them shortly as well. So here we are back in network and virtual switch, and if you had a good memory from looking at the command line, you probably noticed that there is not a one-for-one -one correspondence between the virtual switches in column number two and the virtual adapters which are associated with individual containers such as the virtualization station containers and the container station containers. And the reason for that is because QNAP is not very good at cleaning up the actual adapters even when they're not in use anymore. So let's go over to container station and create ourselves a new container. So here we are in container station and you'll get this disclaimer again for Lexi being at end of support. And we know this when uh, container station 3.x is released, then you will no longer see this notification and you'll also no longer be able to manage Lexc containers. And hopefully you watch my video where I talk about how to convert all of your Lex C containers to Lex D containers. So we really have a simple configuration here because I have one container called Weddy, which is a Lex D container. And then I have this Portainer Edge agent as one Docker container out here. So let's go ahead and create another container. And in this case, let's go ahead and make it an Ubuntu container. So I type Ubuntu, I go over to the LexD image server, and I choose the uh, Ubuntu server for, let's see here, how about, how about Focal? So that's 2004, and we'll go ahead and give it a name of uh, test. And we can go into advanced settings here, and where it has MAC address, if you rotate this MAC address with this icon, it will be bolded. And that means that every time Container Station boots, it gets the same MAC address. By default, your container mode will always be, or your network mode will always be natted. And you can also make it bridged. So let's go ahead and just create this container as a natted container for right now. And I go ahead and, oh yes, we also have to have the privilege mode requirement. So I say yes, go ahead and turn that on. And I go back to overview. And here shortly we should see our new container called test, which gets created. And there it is. And it should be started shortly. Now that the test container is started and up and running and on the NAT network, if we go back to network and virtual switch, you can see that there is a test virtual adapter here and it's going through LexDBR0 and then LexDBR0 is not is going out to the network in a sort of a virtual fashion but it's not reachable from any of the adapters because it's not bridged and as we know uh, LexD containers that are created on a NAT just like Docker containers created on a NAT are not reachable from the outside unless they have exposed ports or unless they are bridged to the main LAN. So let's bridge our test LexD container to the main LAN and we do that by going back to container station, clicking on test, going into settings and under settings to advanced settings and under advanced settings to network and under network mode to bridged. And under bridge, we have the option to bridge it to adapters one and two, which again are teamed together on my main LAN, or we can set it to adapter three, or we can set it to adapter four. So we'll go ahead and put it on adapter four, and we'll do an apply. Now, if we go back to network and virtual switch, we can see that the test adapter is bridged to the virtual switch LabNet Network and LabNet Network is connected to adapter 4. So if anybody comes in on the network via the 192.168.50 network, they will go to the LabNet Network and they will in turn go down to find the test uh, LexD virtual machine. 
So you might be asking, how is it that I got on this VLAN 50 over here on adapter 4, which is labeled uh, LabNet Network? And the answer to that is that this physical adapter, adapter 4, is plugged into a switch port on a managed switch, and that switch port on that managed switch specifically has a port profile that points it to VLAN 50 on my network. Since adapter 4 points to that switch port profile for VLAN 50, the QNAP NAS has no idea it's pointing to a VLAN. This way of connecting to VLANs works really great as long as the number of VLANs you want to connect to does not exceed the number of adapters that you have. So there's a great way around this. And if you go out to interfaces and we see all of our interface names here, in my case, adapter one and two are teamed together again. Adapter four is the LabNet network that we just connected our new test virtual machine to. And adapter three here, I've just labeled VLANs just as a name to keep track of it. If we want to run over to the right side here and hit the hamburger menu, you can see that I have an add VLAN adapter. So if I click on add VLAN adapter, I have a VLAN 30 on my network and VLAN 30 is my IOT VLAN. So I will go ahead and type in IOT VLAN and you can either take this VLAN and give it a static address or let it obtain a, uh, a dynamic address. And basically this address is the address of the gateway for that VLAN. So I go ahead and do an apply. Now that that VLAN is created, I can go create a second VLAN by clicking on the hamburger menu again and saying add VLAN. In this case, I'm going to add VLAN 80 and VLAN 80 is my cloud DMZ VLAN. So these are existing VLANs and I just want to have them uh, noted here on the adapter. So once that creates, you'll see it pop in here shortly and there we go. So adapter three has two VLANs underneath it. Now if we go back to overview and we look at the overview of this configuration, you're going to see on the right hand side that we have adapter 3 and it has an address of 192.168.30.51 and it got that address from my DHCP server on my router and then the other VLAN uh, 192.168.80.153 got an address down here. Now we can't address adapters directly instead we have to create a virtual switch in order to use them. So a virtual switch is also known as a gateway. And we can go ahead and go here to the virtual switch interface and say, I want to add a virtual switch. And when this comes up, I'm going to go ahead and think I might want to do a software defined switch. But if I do that, it just wants to talk to a particular physical adapter, and that's not really what I want. So I'll go ahead and click Add again, and this time I'm going to click Basic Mode. In Basic Mode, it allows me to choose an adapter that I want to use, and it will allow me to choose a virtual adapter. So I'm going to say I'm going to choose the one for VLAN 30, and I'll go ahead and do an apply. If I scroll down the screen on my virtual switch listing, I have a virtual switch called virtual switch 14. And you can see here that it's talking to adapter three on VLAN 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of this and just call this IOT and parenthetically VLAN 30 to help self-document what I have out here. And I'll hit the check mark and it goes ahead and saves that rename. 
Next, I'm going to go out here and add another virtual switch. And this virtual switch I will add also in basic mode. And I will say VLAN 30 or VLAN 80, which is the next one down here. And I will click apply and it will create that virtual switch just like it created the IoT virtual switch. Now, if I scroll down to the end of the virtual switch listing, you can see that I have a virtual switch 15 and we're going to go ahead and edit it and we will call it the DMZ cloud and parenthetically VLAN 80. And I hit the check mark to save the rename for it. So now we want to go back to the network and virtual switch overview menu. And when we click on the overview menu, it will draw the new network topology. And you can see that I have a IoT VLAN here, which is pointing to the VLAN on adapter three. And I have the DMZ cloud VLAN, which is pointing to the VLAN on adapter three for VLAN 80. So now we will be able to use these two virtual switches in order to present containers from over here out onto our main network for those particular VLANs. If we go back to the command prompt, we can look down here and see what's changed. We still have our two bridge adapters and our bond adapter and our Docker Zero adapter. And we have an ETH0, an ETH1, and an ETH2, and an ETH3, which we had before. But now we have an ETH2.30, and that would be the physical adapter for the VLAN that we first added. And we have an ETH2.80, which is the other physical adapter for the VLAN. If we move further down the screen, we still have our QBS0, QBS1, and we're now getting a QBS1, which has a 30 address for the IoT network. We had QBS2 before, which was the one for the LabNet network. And now we also have a QBS3, which is the 80 network for our Cloud DMZ VLAN. So as you can see, we grow new QBS adapters for every one of the virtual switches that we end up adding. And then we have a QBS 80, and that was out there before previously, and it's just something that it hadn't cleaned up after. And we have another VETH adapter because we created the test container. So how do these things work exactly? Well, I can go up here to my main menu and I can go down to virtualization station and virtualization station is the application that we use to create virtual machines. And you can see that I have two devices or two virtual machines. One is called Win 11 Fog and the other is called Windows LabNet. So let's go ahead and click on Windows 11 Fog here. And we'll click on the gear for settings. And again, we'll click on settings. And then we'll go down to network. And on the network adapter, we can click on <clears throat> where it says Scott and Katz network. And you can see that we now have an IoT network and a LabNet network and a DMZ cloud network down here that we can connect to. And of course, the, the LabNet network existed previously, but the IoT VLAN and the DMZ cloud VLAN are new. Just to demonstrate that this works, we're gonna go ahead and go down and change this to the DMZ cloud network, and then we'll do an apply. And it said it was applied successfully. So let's go back over here to network and virtual switch and take a look at it. And you can see that the uh, Win 11 fog is 
currently not going anywhere and you say, well, that's really weird. We went ahead and changed that. What's going on? And to answer that question, we really need to be able to shut down that virtual machine and reboot it. And so we'll go ahead and now we won't go ahead and click on that. Let's go ahead and go here and say, do a orderly shutdown. So it sends an ACPI shutdown signal to that system and BMS, uh, or rather Win 11 fog will be shutting down shortly. So now that Win 11 fog is shut down, we'll go ahead and start him back up by hitting the power button and he'll boot back up. Now that I've booted the Windows Virtual Machine back up and gone into a command prompt on it and done an IP config, you can see that it is offering itself on 192.168.80.219, which is in fact an address on the uh, 80 VLAN. Even though the uh, Win 11 Fog Virtual Machine doesn't have a connection to Scott and Cat's virtual switch here and over to adapters one and two, you can still see the line here. And from experience, it takes quite a while for that to go away. In any event, we have here uh, the line that goes from the VM or the, uh, the VM Win 11 Fog over here to the DMZ Cloud VLAN that we created, which is the virtual switch or bridge and that can host many different devices connected to it at one time. And then over finally to adapter three, which is the uh, VLAN 80 down here for DMC Cloud. So far, everything works fine with our virtual adapters. So what if we go back to Container Station and we go ahead and edit the settings for test and we change advanced settings and go back to networking and we still bridge but this time we want to bridge through our new virtual adapters um, either VLAN 80 or VLAN 30. We click the drop down menu and we have a choice of our adapter 1 and 2 or adapter 4 that we're currently bridged through. You notice that adapter 3 is completely grayed out and also we don't see any of the VLAN uh, options for uh, either VLAN 30 or VLAN 80 network devices that we created, nor do we see their virtual switches from Container Station. So this is supposed to be fixed in Container Station version 3.x, but for right now, you have no option to use that virtual switch that we created from Container Station. The fact that we can't offer that test container on that VLAN doesn't mean that we can't offer that test container on that VLAN. It just means we can't offer it from Container Station. So if I go over here to LexD dashboard, which I frequently offer on the channel, we're managing the LexD containers over on VMS Fog and there is our test container. So if we click on that test container, which is currently on the LabNet network, we can see that if we look at profiles, it thinks that it's still running on the internal network. And that's where you have a problem with the way that QNAP has done things. So if we go over here to settings on the test container, and we go over here to advanced, and we change it from bridge back to NAT, it basically removes this hidden bridge that we can't see and we can't manage uh, from the container perspective. And it goes ahead and offers itself back out on the main LAN, or not the main LAN, but on its NAT uh, network. If we go out to network and uh, virtual switch, and we look at the test virtual adapter, you can now see that it's got an address of 10.0.7.36, and it's being routed down through the LexD BR0 adapter, which is what we would have expected, but it's not accessible from any of our LANs. 
If we now go back to the LexD dashboard over here and we look at an overview of the test container, you'll see that the test container is in fact not at 192.168.50. something, but it is now at 10.0.7.36, which makes it running on the internal NAT as we just discussed, and we just performed that function over on Container Station. Now, if I go to Profiles, and if you watch the channel, we talk about LexD profiles all the time. I do, in fact, have a profile for VLAN 80. And if I submit the profile for VLAN 80 and add it to this container test and go back to overviews, the 10 address will disappear and it will actually move over to VLAN 80. And there you go. It's got an address of 192.168.80.237. So we do offer this container out on VLAN 80. If I go over here to look at it from the perspective of network and virtual switch, we need to go back to interfaces and come back to overview so it will refresh. Give it a minute here and we look at the test adapter and the test adapter was connected to the LabNet network. As I said, it takes a little while for that to go away. And now it's connected down to the LexDBR0, but it can't see that we've bridged this thing because it really doesn't have the ability to see that we're using LexD profiles and using my bridged profile behind the scenes. So what we're hoping for is we're hoping that this will be improved in Container Station 3.x. Ideally, what we should be able to do is if we can create a VLAN adapter here and create a virtual switch here, we should be able to use it from within both Container Station and Virtualization Station. And hats off to them. They did fix this in Virtualization Station because rather early on, when the ability to create these VLAN adapters existed in network and virtual switch, they were also broken in virtualization station. But as you can see with our demonstration of Win11 Fog, that virtual machine, we could go change the adapter and allow it to be on any of our new virtual switches. So the thing that I've discussed on the channel many times before is how these uh, profiles actually work. And so if we look at the VLAN 80 profile as an example and we edit it, you can see that it simply points back to device QVS0, which is actually one of their bridges. And I suppose I could have pointed it to ETH0, or I could have pointed it more accurately to Bond0, and it just says that it uses VLAN 80. So your uh, LexD profiles can do all the work of connecting to your VLANs the way you need them to. I'm not sure that by adding all of these additional virtual switches, which really make the networking more complex from the point of view of the QNAP, and then creating these VLAN adapters is really the right way to go, but it is an option and that's how it works. And I wanted everybody to understand that's how it's set up. In summary, QNAP networking can provide very powerful and flexible interface options. Understanding how to leverage network and virtual switch is important for maximum flexibility. Hopefully, a future version of Virtualization Station and Container Station will provide the flexibility to support VLAN adapters fully. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time.